Hey y'all, welcome to our Let's Play of Lost Constellation by Alex Holoka, Scott Benson, and Bethany Hockenberry. The game is primarily narrative driven and serves as a supplement to A Night in the Woods, another game made by Infinite Fault. It allows for players to explore the world in a way that is detached from the central plot. This game opens up with a grandfather telling a bedtime folktale centering around a longest night to his granddaughter. That granddaughter is May, who is actually the protagonist of A Night in the Woods. She takes the role alongside the player as a listener to the story. It's here we are introduced to the main character of the folktale, Adina Astra, an astronomer. She's traveling east towards the frozen lake. We're also shown here the first fundamental gameplay mechanic, snowballs. They're used to hit certain items as well as knock things down. This tiny bit of puzzle solving is very in line with point and click adventure games. However, there's only one issue. She must pass through the forest to reach her destination. It's right before entering the daunting forest that we meet the cat. It is interesting to see that while every other character is anthropomorphic, the cat as well, just a cat. Infinite Fall has a tendency to use anthropomorphic characters in their games with certain animals tying in with their personality. Along the way, Adina meets many characters who are oozing with personality and charm. Ernest Adams states that the goal of character design is to create characters that people find appealing, characters that people can believe in, ones that the player can identify with. Games are innately interactive in terms of their ludic and narrative properties, but they are also bodily and socially interactive. It is these factors that shape players' relationships with the same texts and how they potentially identify with the on-screen characters. Adina as a protagonist is kind, but won't let anything get in her way on her journey. This is a perfect conduit for players to implant themselves into her shoes. Many of the interactions you have with the various characters allow you to pick different dialogue options, so in a sense you can feel like you chose how she reacts. Every choice you make impacts the story. The game is primarily narrative driven, with the storytelling continuing throughout the entire game. This is significant as in the Kyo greeting, it is mentioned that game critics tend to ignore non-play aspects such as menus, loading screens, and even cutscenes. In their eyes, gameplay must speak for the entire game, while everything else is left out. This mindset hurts developers such as Infinite Fall, who lean towards using games as an interactive medium to deliver a compelling story. It is here we come across a second pillar of gameplay, snowman making. In this section, you have the freedom to customize your own snowman with whatever is lying on the forest floor. Sometimes though, it doesn't go as planned. That's why you must use items found within the forest that have been imbued with the spirit of those who have passed on. The process of creating a snowman brings attention to the thousands of choices one makes every day. This abstract concept is one explored by Janet Murray. She's called this type of story a replay story. This kind of story has the ability to draw attention to the ramifications of the stream of choices we take for granted each day. These types of stories give the power to the player who consciously manipulates a story it is these kinds of games that allow developers more impactful ways to tell new types of stories. While in this game, you're stuck in a 2D plane limiting your movement, you're lost in a forest and at the whim of a forest god on what will appear in your path, the amount of choice is relatively limited. But when it comes to snowman building, you're given a bit more freedom in how you make them. After reciting a prayer and being transported to the forest god's domain, Adina attempts to seek counsel but is denied. You don't stop playing a video game when you stop pressing buttons. The player can actively be involved in the game even when not directly influencing the game itself. When the grandfather is telling the story, you are able to continuously be involved through listening and attention. 
In some cases, you can directly go against the game and break the rules. Can I go... And then she jumped off the cliff. What? No, she didn't. This concept of rule breaking in games is important. Should we always follow the rules laid out by developers, even if it means we're not enjoying the game? Or is it better to carve our own path with a little bit of deviance? It can be argued that breaking the rules can enhance certain games. Take a look at the speedrun community. An entire genre has emerged as a result of breaking rules. No Fun is a valuable mode of thinking for game designers, as it directs them to challenge assumptions about what games can and should be. It draws attention to emotional experience as something both personal and political, while highlighting the broader cultural implications of fun. As Astra meets new characters along her journey, the story opens up to new possibilities. These chance encounters lead her to backtrack to meet old characters and see them in different lights. When she arrives at Hunter's Hut, there is a puzzle that Adina must solve. According to Janet Murray, stories and games involve some element of contest between protagonist and antagonist. In this particular case, the contest that Adina must overcome is to escape the Hunter's Hut and reach the Frozen Lake, while the Hunter's goal is to survive at all costs. This is intertwined with Janet Murray's definition of a puzzle structure as well. The style is not based inside the game, but rather outside of it. It's the battle of wits between developer and player. Upon completing the final puzzle, she's able to receive the last token to build a snowman with. It's revealed that the spirit that imbued this particular snowman is the twin sister of the hunter. It is here we discover the horrifying past of the hunter. She left her twin sister to die so that she could survive and stay warm. A tattoo ripped from her deceased sister's body being the only memento that she still has. This traumatic moment leads to Astra being banished from the hunter's hut. So she resumes her journey, optionally confronting those she met along the way. long last she's able to reach the frozen lake and it's finally revealed why she journeyed so far to get here to reunite with her lost lover a female astronomer the ghost star allows her spirits to speak to those around them it is the lost constellation overall Lost Constellation employs a variety of techniques to craft an experience for the player. The merit of how fun an experience like this can be is highly debatable, as fun is subjective and personal. Is Lost Constellation intended to be a fun story? Adina is on a journey that has a limited amount of time, so for the majority of the game, the story isn't fun, it's a mission. For reasons like this, Fun as a monolithic principle silences the voices of the marginalized and promotes reactionary behavior from within privileged spaces in the community. The game is a slow burn that puts emphasis on the narrative above all else. It primarily sits in the realm of no fun as a result of this. But that may be what the developers at Infinite Falls set out to do. This is similar to Mainichi. As in both games, players experience the same emotions as the protagonists, which help represent what it means to be a part of a marginalized community. Oftentimes, life is slow and not always fun for them. 
with the goal of No Fun Games to not just simply make the player walk in the shoes of the character, but to form a personal connection in order to empathize with them. The depiction of queerness in the finale showcases this concept beautifully. Under the No Fun model, queer worldmaking is built upon the liberating logic of masochism, that pleasure and its meaning cannot be bound by the normative. New worlds of meaning are created in the moment we embrace new worlds of experience. Infinite Fall has a tendency to highlight these marginalized communities in a way that does not shine a spotlight on them for just being a part of said community. Adina's sexuality is not the focal point of a narrative, it's just a part of who she is. Like the Lost Constellation, sometimes the star is always there. We just can't see it yet. <laughs>